Okay, now parallel lines are actually quite interesting. Um, and the reason why is because if you look at the definition okay, of parallel lines, is that they are lines with no points in common. Actually, I should change that to say they are infinite lines. And um, what we've looked at so far has only been um, uh, work with, with geometry. It's not been Euclidean geometry that we've looked at. We've only been looking at normal geometry. Now, what's the difference, you might ask? And it's, it's exactly this. Um, when it comes to parallel lines, we get different types of parallel lines. For example, we said that parallel lines are lines that never intersect. Now, if we work on a flat surface, they are lines that have the same distance between them. Like that. These are, these are I should actually use different colors. So, assume that this, the blue is a, is a flat surface and the green um, is parallel lines then the distance between these everywhere are the same okay that would be parallel lines on a, on a flat surface but on a sphere if I was working on the on a large scale and my flat surface actually becomes so large that I include the whole earth parallel lines aren't uh, aren't lines like this anymore on a, on a sphere, a line is goes around infinitely, infinitely, it goes on, okay, then it goes around the back all the way to where it starts, and it's infinite, so it's actually a circle. But now, I can draw another line that does not, that's not equal distance at every point. It means equal distance at, at um, equal parallel, perpendicular distance. Um, I can draw one here that looks like this. Okay, it goes around, it's going skew a little bit, do you see? But these two lines never cut each other. Can you see that? I know it's a little bit 3D, it does look like it cuts there and there, but this is in the front and that's at the back. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Okay, so these, and here you can see this is definitely closer together than at that point, but they are parallel lines. There are lines that never have points in common. Parallel does not necessarily mean this. On a flat surface, yes, it means the equal distances. But on a sphere, it doesn't. Okay, And then we get something else. It's uh, this is called s uh, spherical geometry. Then we get something called hyperbolic geometry. And that would be like, imagine you have a dish, like a satellite dish. It's difficult to draw, very difficult to draw. But the sides of the dish goes on forever, like a parabola, okay? But it's 3D, so it's like a, like a cup almost, okay? The inside of a cup, but a, a, a satellite dish works nice. So, so imagine now we're just cutting it off around here. By the way, this you don't need to know, I'm just telling you for interest sake. Okay, we're only going to work in this, which is called Euclidean geometry. Okay, and I'll tell you just now why is it called Euclidean. Okay, in this, uh, if I were to draw a line in this thing, it would be on the inside. Now, on the inside, uh, a line would look like this. It would look like a parabola on the surface of this thing. Actually, it's more a hyperbola. Okay, there's one line. Now, that's on that side and goes on forever because this side goes on forever. And then on this side, we can also draw another one and it will go on forever now it looks more or less on the sketch as if the distances are the same but since this thing is going away and away the distance here is the closest and then it just gets further away as we go out okay so but these are lines they're not straight lines as we understand straight lines just like this is not a straight line as we understand straight lines but it's a different surface on which I'm working so the geometry works a little bit different okay 
what is the in uh, what is the um, interior angles of a triangle add up to? That's something we're getting to. But if I have a triangle and I add up all of the angles inside, what does it add up to? 180. 180. Well, let me show you that you are wrong. Okay. If you stand on the North Pole and you head down straight to the equator, assume the purple one is the equator, what angle are you making there? It's a 90 degree angle. Okay, now go back to the, equa to the North Pole where you started. Make a 90 degree turn and head to the equator again. What angle are you making? <laughs> again, a 90 degree angle. Mm -hmm. When you head from the North Pole to the equator, you will always make a 90 degree angle. So here we have a triangle. You can see it's a floppy triangle. But it is a triangle on the Earth's surface. If you take a line and you draw, it's a, it's a triangle. Okay, you're drawing a straight line to the equator. You go back, you make a 90. You're making a 90, a, a, a triangle, but each angle adds up. All the angles add up to? Um, 270. 270. Okay. And as a matter of fact, all of the angles on a sphere will always be, a triangle on a sphere will always be greater than 180. Inside here, when we draw a triangle, it, it would look weird. I'll draw there another line and there another line. So there's my triangle there. And you'll see all of these angles are actually quite quite small angles. All of them are less than 90. So this, in this one, all of these, I think, I'm speaking under correction, but I think all of them will add up to less than 180 in hyperbolic geometry. So it's only in Euclidean geometry that that we get that the angles of a straight line, um, oh, the angles of an interior, the interior angles of a triangle adds up to 180. Okay, and and why? What's the difference between between these three? Is actually an assumption. It's it's not something we can prove. It's not something something we have to believe. We have to take it by faith, and it's called. And by the way, everything so far I've said is not. The only thing you need to know is this definition so far, okay? But the um, I think it's called Euclid's postulate. Euclid's postulate, and it's not the exact words that Euclid used, but Euclid was a guy that lived uh, before Christ, and long ago. Um, invented geometry in a sense not really because they were using things like Pythagoras the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees things similar to that but they didn't have any proof or they didn't know why it was true they didn't do what we just did okay they just assumed it works so we'll use it and he just said no we, we can't do that we have to have proof we have to know that what we're using is always true and he said okay let me start with absolutely nothing I'll assume I don't know anything just like we started and he realized, but I have to start somewhere. I can't have nothing. So just like we started with a definition, that angles on a straight line add up to 180. He started even before that. I'm not going to go into that. But eventually he get, gets to a point where he can't prove things anymore with, with the things he's assumed. And he has to assume a new thing. For example, he couldn't prove that the inside angles from what we've done so far, you can't prove that the inside angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Okay, we have to make a new assumption and the assumption that he made was that and I'll write it here the angles uh, sorry the interior angles the interior angles on the same side of a line that intersects two parallel lines are supplementary. Now I haven't told you what supplementary is yet. 
but supplementary means they add up to 180 degrees. Okay. I'll draw this for you in just a minute, then you can see what the heck am I saying. Okay. The interior angles on the same side of a line that intersects two parallel lines are supplementary. Okay, so um, um, it sounds weird, doesn't it? Okay, and something that you need to learn is how to um, evaluate a definition. What does the definition actually say? Okay, the interior angles on the same side of a line that intersects two parallel lines. So here's a line, here's two parallel lines, here's a line that intersects two parallel lines. The interior angles are the two angles on the inside. And we are assuming, we don't know this, we can't prove it, we are assuming it. And because we're assuming it, we are working in this type of environment. If we assume that they are more than 180 degrees, we would be working in this type of an environment. If we're assuming they're less than 180, we'd be working in that type of environment. So we're assuming they are supplementary. So these two angles, and you can see here, if I, if I draw a, a line here, then on this side they are more than 180 degrees, and on this side they will be less than 180 degrees. And here, well, it's too difficult to draw it here, but I'll just use that as a demonstration. So, <coughs> and these angles, these interior angles, we call co-interior angles. Because of this relationship, we call them co-interior angles. 